All right, district breakdown time. And I'll tell you what, Diggs, I've been waiting for these last two districts, probably for the whole time we've been doing this, but let's talk 10-6A right now. I'm gonna throw two names out there, Rockwell and Heath, and go. And go. Uh, I mean, talk about a rivalry, talk about playoff runs last year, talk about the intra-competitiveness. Uh, I was told I was being very disrespectful at the mouth last year when I asked uh, at the at the Cedar Hill versus Rockwell Heath game where all the Rockwell fans are. I thought the district should support each other. They don't like each other very much in this district. Even when the playoffs come around, it, it's not friendly competition anymore. Uh, they they have a lot of autonomy over there. It, it, it's too separate programs in the same ISD, but two separate programs that have probably two of the top three quarterbacks in uh, the Metroplex. You got Josh Hoover at Rockwall Heath. You know, this is a guy, I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of at the beginning of last season. And then at the end of last season, you can't quit hearing about him. Uh, his leadership skills, uh, that run that Rockwall Heath had, uh, really impressed me. And then Braden Locke, you know, we've talked about him for a couple of years. I don't know uh, how Ashley has been able to manage without getting to uh, talk about the Jigba Smith uh, all the time, but you know, uh, still we can talk about Braden Locke uh, and, and talk about this two top end quarterback. Yeah, and I think uh, week one Rockwall has Cedar Hill, so they're they're definitely testing themselves right off the bat there. Uh, with we'll both agree those are one two up there, which however way they fall, whoever wins that game. What do you have for the rest of the district there, especially uh, some of these Mesquite teams? Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about Mesquite. I actually want to talk about Skyline. I think Skyline is kind of one of my dark horses. Uh, they've got some players that a lot of people aren't talking about, but, I mean, very highly recruited on the Dallas Morning News Top 100. you got Daryl Richardson, quarterback coming back, uh, all district honors last year. You've got Maley on Winfield, the good receiver coming back. Anthony Davis, a really good cornerback coming back. This is a team that's got – they're going to have the size. They're going to have the athleticism. Now they've got the top-tier talent and playmaking capabilities uh, that are going to be really, really hard to stop, especially given how Tyler Legacy really graduated almost everybody last year. And uh, the Mesquites all have a couple of players coming back, but I wonder about their depth. I wonder about their consistency. Obviously, uh, new coaches over the last couple of years at Mesquite and the North Mesquite. Uh, Chance Edwards, the quarterback at Mesquite, is going to be a, a big pillar of their success. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to have the playmakers to distribute the football to. Uh, North Mesquite's got that really good receiver, Cordell Russell. Uh, they got a really good junior running back to be a senior in Kobe Norman. But I don't know if their defense is going to stop anybody. And then you got Mesquite Horn, who's got, got Darius White coming back, the really good quarterback, really good, talented tight end, Braylon Dillard coming back. But is their defense going to stop anybody? So I kind of have – got Rockwell and Rockwell Heath are going to be fighting for the top spot. I like Skyline three. I've got Tyler Legacy four. I don't know if we're going to see any of the Mesquite schools actually make it into the playoffs. They're all talented. I'm not putting a, a big gap between those three Mesquite schools and Tyler Legacy. But I don't know if any of them are going to have the depth to make it to that next level and make it to the playoffs. That's good. That's going to be something to see. And I, I like that way you brought up Malion Winfield because he's – you brought up him and then you talked about how nobody talked about Josh Hoover last year. Nobody talked about Malion last year because he only caught seven passes playing behind Cordarius Davis. It's, he's high up there in the rankings and he's ready to go. So he's ready to show his skills. So they'll probably talk about him a lot this year if the quarterback can get him the ball. Yeah, I mean, this is a receiver district. I mean, we so many players we didn't talk about. I'll just throw them out there because how can you not talk about this district without talking about Jay Fair and Jordan Neighbors and Zach Evans, Caden Marshall, Zach Hernandez. These are all players for Heath and Rockwall that made big impacts last year. This is going to be a very fun district. There's going to be a lot of points scored in this district. And when you look at the talent and you look at the list, there's really not a lot of defense and talent in this district. If you saw Rockwell Heath give up 70 regularly early in the early part of the season, they may be giving up 70 again. But I think this year the difference is they're going to have the offense to put up 77 when they're putting up 70, giving up 70 for the last year, close to mid-40s for them. I'm already itching to see that Rockwall Heath game. I have to talk to my guy James, see if I can get on the list there, make that trek out to Rockwall because that one's going to be a doozy. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate you giving us that 10 6 a knowledge. We wrap things up next week with 11 6 a That's another mega district. And I will talk to you next week. See you next week.